Hello everyone, Trophy One Hunter. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm doing a video on corkage. So what is corkage? So you'll see that in many uh, restaurants now. Restaurants will now offer you the ability to bring in your own wine and pay a corkage fee. And uh, let's talk about the philosophy behind this. The reason um, to use this ability is not to save money. It should be that you have a special wine. Restaurants work very hard to put together great wine lists. And so um, you have to be respectful of that. So the first thing I would say about Corkage is that always respect the um, restaurant's policy. So if the, pol if the restaurant does not allow Corkage, they have the right to do so. Normally now, typically, um, restaurants will actually sometimes put it on their menus or put it in their website about corkage or their reservation, um, you know, one bottle or two bottles, they'll say that. If not, you can always ask. And um, sometimes if, if I'm, it's not a big deal to me, then I will just uh, go to the restaurant, bring a bottle and ask them what the corkage is. Um, it's not a negotiation, okay? So when they set the price for the corkage, um, just accept it. I see people say, well, come on, is that, that's too expensive. That's their right. And you have to understand restaurants um, make money on the service of wine. That's one of the supplemental incomes. Uh, that's how they make money. They have to pay staff. They have to have your decanter. They have to wash your glasses. So be respectful. What whether it be $15, $50, $100, you have that option um, to then say, that's too expensive, so I'm not prepared to uh, open a bottle. And that's your option. But I don't think it's really right to kind of negotiate with a restaurant and say, well, that's too expensive. Um, because again, if it's too expensive, drink something off their wine list, which they worked hard to put together. When do I use corkage? It's generally speaking when I think that I have a special wine or I have something that their list does not offer. So for example, I went to Paul Bocuse in Lyon recently. I didn't go and say, well, I want to bring a bottle for Corkage, right? Because they probably got a huge wine list and it's very um, kind of inconvenient for me to bring a wine all the way from Canada to Lyon. I'm not going to go to a local store and just buy a bottle and then bring it to Paul Bocuse. Uh, I don't think that's the point. It's generally speaking that I have um, maybe older vintages of wine, um, I have a special bottle or that I feel that you know my bottle will pair a little bit better. You'll probably wonder why I have these two wines here. Uh, as you know, if you're a follower of mine, um, I've been working on um, uh, drinking and learning more about two specific regions. One is Barolo and I've just had the Massolino wine. Um, so, and then the second one is um, Chambon Messigny. And you'll notice this is not a Chambon Messigny wine, this is a Bourguignon. This is, I'm told by the liquor store consultant, basically declassified Chambon Messigny. And that's where it's helpful um, when you have uh, product consultants that are very knowledgeable. And that's what I find in BC. We're, one of the great things we have here is very knowledgeable product consultants. Um, this was bought at the Fort Street um, liquor store in Victoria. Um, they have some great consultants there. And, um, you know, this is kind of a cheap way to drink um, uh, Chambon Moussigny. And so um, I hope to be able to review this shortly. I'm dying to try this. What type of wine should you bring in for corkage? In general, it should not be a wine that is um, readily available or purchasable in the marketplace at this point. Uh, again, these are all my own personal rules. It's not, it's not written in stone, but this is my personal opinion of things. And secondly, it should be probably double or triple the corkage cost. So let's say the corkage cost is $50. It doesn't make sense to bring in a $50 wine in my opinion, because that's really a cost savings benefit and it doesn't really justify it. So let's say it's a $50 charge. I would say the wine, um, your purchase price should be about $100 or $150. Um, that gives you some justification because a lot of uh, that would be a $300, $350 wine in a in a 
restaurant, and generally a lot of them won't carry a lot of $300, $350 wines, um, except for the top end uh, restaurants. Um, the second thing I would do is because it is a concession, it is not, don't treat it like, hey, this is, I'm, I'm the client and I, I can do whatever I like. It's a request and the, the restaurant is allowing to you, um, please be generous with that. And that means um, that in two ways. One, I think it's nice to um, let the sommelier or the person that's serving taste the wine, offer it. Some people don't, as a general rule, drink with, with the customers. They're not allowed to, whatever. And so um, just offer it because two things. One, I think um, it's their obligation as a uh, professional to check the wine. So they will, if you let them taste it, they will check the wine and, um, you know, tell you if it's corked or not. The second thing is that it's a learning experience for them too, because it's a new wine, it's not on their list, so it's um, a learning experience. But in addition to that, if they have given you additional services, um, they've talked about the wine or they've uh, given you, you know, nice glasses, you should probably tip them on top uh, of that. That's my personal preference, that personal um, idea. Um, the reason being is that a lot of people feel that, oh, um, you know, the sommelier should be so happy for me. If I bring in a Chateau Lafitte, oh, wow, they should be happy to serve me a wine. Well, why would they be happy to serve you wine? You're drinking it. Um, it's better if you let them have a taste of it too, then they're happy too. But that doesn't take the place of a tip. Uh, remember, it's your pleasure. It's not their pleasure. They're still working. It's better. It's, it's, it's better that, that they get a taste, it's better that they get a tip, but ultimately they're still working. It's not their pleasure to serve you. And so I think people kind of have that wrong sometimes. They think, wow, people should be wowed by my, I bring a DRC, people should be wow, they should they fall over themselves for me. Well, but you're drinking the wine. <laughs> Unless you're giving them the wine and letting them drink it, then they'll be wowed. But, uh, you know, so I just want to make sure that people got the right frame of mind um, that, you know, when, you know, you bring in a big bottle of wine or, and you find, well, how come the people are not happy for me or not thrilled? It's because you're drinking the wine, right? They're just serving you the wine. And um, so please let them in on the enjoyment by serving them a little bit of the wine, getting their notes and also um, if they're giving you great service or giving you additional services by telling you more about the wine or helping with tasting notes, tip the people. Uh, again, uh, it's really important um, because that goes along with the philosophy of wine. So why don't we talk about it again about wine wisdom. So if you, the philosophy of this is that if you are bringing wines into a restaurant, they're very nice wines, you've been very fortunate in life to have these wines. Um, that just, that extends to other parts of your life. You can't just say, I'm a fortunate person, I'm, you know, I've got all these great wines, but I'm going to be stingy. Because then you've learned nothing about the wine. Because if you look at the history of most of these wines, what have they done? The uh, attention to detail, quality of service, They've um, all these type of quality um, characteristics go into the wine. Um, and then you as a person are not a quality person. So that's what I'm just saying, that when you um, go into these restaurants, be generous, don't be stingy, um, because that is not um, becoming of a person that's drinking the wine. Now, again, people are going to disagree with me and say, well, listen, it's my wine uh, trophy. I can do whatever I like. I've earned the money. I want to try to share with anyone. You're right. You can do whatever you like. Um, but again, that's not the philosophy, I think, when you drink trophy wines, in my opinion. The idea behind trophy wines is basically not to brag about them, drink them, and um, kind of hoard them for yourself. The idea is to share the experience, to share 
uh, because not everyone has that opportunity. Not everyone opens a Lafitte, Latour, Aubryon every day. So share that experience and hopefully if you share that experience with your friends, with other people in the service industry, they grow, their um, education grows, their knowledge grows, their love and passion of wine grows. Um, I know people will say, you know, that's so uh, kumbaya and holding your hands or whatever. But to me, that's really what we learn from wine. If you look at the history of wine and the great wineries, um, it's normally it talks about all these positive traits um, about sharing your knowledge about not hoarding things about um, being generous uh, with your knowledge and your resources and so that's all I'm saying as a wine collector please be generous and um, learn something from the wines that you're drinking um, don't separate them. And so if you are blessed with having such nice wines, with the ability to drink these wines, with the ability to sit down at a nice restaurant and pay corkage, pay it um, properly, pay it um, with positivity and share that experience with other people. Um, I know I've been preachy about this, but uh, and I don't know if this video has gone on and on, but I hope you've enjoyed this video. Until next time, happy drinking.